The new Oracle SQL Developer extension for VS Code has just been released. Let's install it and see what you can do with it. The Oracle team has been working on a new version of SQL Developer for a while. In January 2024, it was released. Jeff Smith from Oracle said this in his post. It's the future of SQL Developer. We're taking the features you've been using in Oracle SQL Developer and making them available in VS Code. So let's install it and run some queries. First, open Visual Studio Code. If you haven't installed it, go and install it first and then come back here. We'll install this new SQL Developer feature as an extension. Click on the Extensions button on the left, or go to View then Extensions. If you have an extension called Oracle Developer Tools for VS Code, you may want to remove that so it doesn't cause conflicts. I don't have that installed here, so I can continue. In the search box, enter SQL Developer. Find the entry called Oracle SQL Developer Extension for VS Code. Click on the Install button. After a moment, it will be installed. You'll also see a new icon appear on the left panel that looks like this, which represents the Oracle SQL Developer extension. Now the extension is installed, let's open it and connect to our database. Click on this icon on the sidebar. Then click the Create Connection button here. A new tab opens called New Connection. Enter a name so you can identify the connection. I'll call mine Oracle Local. For the username, I'll enter a user I have already created, called Gravity. You would enter the user you have set up, or the sys user. Then enter the password for the user. These would be the same connection details you would use for a connection in SQL Developer or other editors. Click Save Password if you want to store the password so you don't have to enter it again each time. For the connection details at the bottom, I'll enter the details for my local install. Your details may be different, depending on how your Oracle database is set up. Click the Test button to test the connection. Hopefully it works. If you get an error, you'll have to check your details are correct and the TNS listener service is running. Once it is successful, click Save. The connection will appear in the left panel. Let's connect and start working with the database. To connect to the database, either expand the connection or right-click and select Connect. We can see a list of all the object types here. We'll come back to this later in the video. Let's start writing some SQL. To do this, we need to open a new SQL worksheet. You can do this by hovering over the connection name and clicking this Open SQL Worksheet button here, or pressing Ctrl Shift W. A new tab appears at the top of the screen. Let's write a select query. As you start typing, the autocomplete appears almost instantly, with a list of commands and other keywords. When we start typing the table name, the list of tables is shown in the autocomplete. Select one of the tables. Let's run this query. We can do that in two ways, either running as an SQL statement with a grid output, or as a script, just like in SQL Developer. To run with a grid output, click the Run Statement button on the top right, or press Ctrl Enter. The output is shown at the bottom of the screen. To run it as a script, click the Run Script button on the top right, or press F5. The output is shown here. Another thing you can do in this extension is export data. Let's run the SQL as a statement again to get the grid output. To export the data, right-click in the Output section and select Export. A panel appears on the right of the screen that allows you to export data. By default, the format is shown as CSV. You can change it to a range of other formats. You can also change the line terminator, select whether you want to include the column headers or not, and select the text enclosure characters. Click export when you're ready. The file will be generated, and after a moment you'll be prompted to save the file. Enter a name and select a location, then click Save. The file is then saved. It's also opened in a new tab in VS Code, which you can see here. Click the X on the tab to close it. The extension also includes an Explain Plan feature. Click on the Explain Plan button on the top right, and you'll see a new tab that shows the execution plan for the query. It's in a script format, which you may be familiar with from using the command line tools. 
You can save your SQL scripts as files. To do this, go to File, then Save, or press Ctrl S. Browse to a location where you want to save the file, enter a file name, and click Save. The file is now saved. We can see the file name appears in red at the top of the tab here. If we hover over the tab name, we can see the file path and name, and then the words one problem with this file. This is why it's showing in red. On the bottom of the screen, there is a problems tab with the number one. Click on that for more information. It says there is a syntax error and a character is missing. We can also see in our query there is a red underline at the end of the word book. This is because there is no semicolon. Add a semicolon to the end of the query. Instantly, the small red line disappears, the problem entry disappears, and the tab heading changes from red to white. This is a handy way to see and fix syntax errors in your queries. A white circle appears next to the tab name. This indicates that the file has had changes since it was last saved. Press Ctrl S to save the file and the white dot disappears. To open an SQL file, you can do this in two ways. The first way is to click on File, then Open File. An open dialog box appears. Select the file to open, then click Open. It is opened in a new tab. Another way, which I think is pretty cool, is to use these breadcrumbs here. Click on the name of the file here that you have open, and a list of files available in the same folder is shown. You can select another SQL file and it opens in a new tab. You can also click on the folder name in the breadcrumb to select a file from that folder. If the file is in the same folder or easily accessible, you might prefer this approach. Let's have a look at the database browser panel on the left. We can see different object types here. If you expand one of the types, such as tables, you'll see a list of all of the objects in the database that the user can see. We can click on a table and a new tab is opened with information about that table, just like in SQL Developer. Separate tabs within this tab are shown for different parts of the object, such as columns, data and constraints. You can also click on the SQL tab to see the SQL that can be used to create the object. Just like with opening a file, you can click on the object name on the breadcrumbs to select and open a different object. If I click on the current table name of address, then select another table such as book, the book table information opens in a new tab. I could also click on the table entry and select a different object type. This is a handy way to browse the objects in the database. Click X to close the tab. You might be thinking, this all looks pretty good, but what's next? Well, according to the blog post from Jeff Smith from Oracle, it says the goal is for the team to add features that exist in SQL Developer, and then SQL Developer will be deprecated. Even though this extension only came out very recently at the time of recording, it seemed pretty easy to use, fast, and the features just seem to work. If you want to find out more, you can read the announcement blog post by Jeff Smith, and check out the community forum for the extension. I've linked to both of these in the description. If there are any features for this extension you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.